Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. This is uh, our final oral session in this NIPS. Okay, so it is my great pleasure to introduce the presentation. The presentation is about the generalization error of the kernel method with Nystrom approximation. The title is Less is More Nystrom Computational Regularization by Alexander Rudy, uh, Rafael um, uh, Camoriano, uh, Robert, uh, Lorenzo Ros uh, Rosasco. So um, Ale Alexander will give a presentation. Thank you very much. I'm Alessandro Rudi. I'm going to present the work I did with Raffaello Camoriano and Lorenzo Rosasco. Let me give a bit of introduction for our work. We started from the consideration that while classically statistics and optimization were considered distinct steps in the process of designing a machine learning algorithms, nowadays a good understanding of the inter interaction between statistics and optimization is crucial since we deal with large-scale learning problems. In this context, our work is a step in this direction, as you will see uh, in the rest of the uh, talk. Our context is supervised learning. Uh, here, the problem is to estimate a function f star, given a number of examples. The examples satisfy the classical input-output relation. Note here that uh, the input and the noise are random with an unknown distribution, and f star is a noun too. Um, I will give a short introduction to the setting of learning with kernels that is particularly important for our work, and then I will state our result. Since we know very little or nothing about the function f star, we want to use a model that is very general, in particular nonlinear and nonparametric. So Q is a nonlinear function. WI are the centers where we put the nonlinearities. CI are the coefficients of the combination. And M is the number of centers we want to use. Not that uh, in order to have a nonparametric uh, non estimator, M should grow with the number of points. So now the question is, how to choose the number of, po of centers, the coefficients, the location of the centers, for estimating f star properly given the data set? There is a classical answer to this question when q is a kernel, so it is symmetric and positive definite function. In this case, according to the representer theorem, we just have to use n centers, one on each point of the data set. In this case, we can find the coefficients just by using convex optimization. So, uh, let me give um, an example that is particularly important for our context, um, as you will see in the rest. So this is kernel ridge regression, uh, a classical algorithm, also known as penalized least squares. Here we are minimizing the mean square error on the uh, computed on the whole data set plus a regularization term over the space of all the non-parametric estimators with an arbitrary number of centers and the centers located arbitrarily in the space. Despite the fact that the space is huge and possibly infinite dimensional, the solution um, is in accordance with the representer theorem. Indeed, it has n centers, one on each point of the data set, and the coefficients can be found by solving this linear system. So, uh, we are interested in kernel ridge regression because, first of all, it is simple, but because its statistical properties and its computational properties are very well understood. Indeed, if f star belongs to H, then the distance between the non-parametric estimator and the true function is of the order of 1 over square root of n, if lambda is chosen appropriately. So some consideration. First of all, this bound is optimal. So no other algorithm can improve it. And it is a very interesting result. Um, moreover, it holds for general kernels. In this case, there is an index of simplicity uh, for the learning problem, and the optimal bound is sensitive to it. 
In this case, if the problem is very simple, the bound is of the order of 1 over n with respect to 1 over square root of n in the worst case. Obviously, we have to choose lambda accordingly. So, even if we don't know the index of simplicity, we can again achieve optimal bounds if we select lambda by using cross-validation. So, we have seen that um, kernel ridge regression has optimal statistical properties and a quite complete statistical analysis. What can we say about computations? Well, um, to find the coefficients, we have to solve this linear system, so it will require n squared in space, because we have to build the kernel matrix you had, and n cube in time in the worst case, because we have to invert it. So, unfortunately, this algorithm is not um, suitable for big data, for its computational complexity, uh, despite of the fact that uh, its statistical properties are very good. Can we fix this problem? Uh, now I'll just spend one slide on data-dependent subsampling, and then I will state our result. The idea of subsampling is to use a small number of centers uh, sampled at random. In particular, data-dependent subsampling works this way. First of all, we pick a small number of centers uniformly at random from the data set. Then we perform again kernel ridge regression. So we minimize the uh, mean square error on the whole uh, data set, but now not on the original space H. We, we minimize it on the space HM that contains only the um, uh, non-parametric estimators with the um, centers we have picked before. In this way, uh, in order to find the coefficients, we have only to solve this linear system that is way smaller with respect to the one for kernel ridge regression. And so the complexity shrinks from n square to nm and from n cube to nm square in time. So this algorithm has very good computational properties, but what do we know about its statistical properties? Is there a statistical price are we going to pay for efficient computations? This is the question. And our work, our result, answer to both those questions. A bit of context, so there are many different subsampling schemes beyond uniform sampling, and from a theoretical point of view, uh, a lot of work studied the theoretical properties of the subsampled kernel matrix. And while it is interesting in itself, it is not clear what is the impact of this analysis on the um, um, uh, statistical properties of the subsample non-parametric estimator. Finally, there are a uh, few works that studied exactly the statistical properties of the non-parametric, of the subsample non-parametric estimator, but their results are suboptimal or they work only um, in a restricted setting. So, this is our theorem. As you can see, it is very similar to the theorem for uh, kernel ridge regression. Indeed, the bound is the same, and the condition on lambda is the same. We added a condition on the number of centers. Some considerations. First of all, this is a proof that subsampling achieves optimal bounds, and it is a new result. Moreover, it achieves optimal bounds with a number of centers that is only of the order of square root of n to be compared to the number of centers you need for kernel ridge regression that is n. So already here, you can see that you are not paying any statistical price for um, efficient computations. Moreover, um, our result holds even in the general case and uh, we have the same result, uh, the same bound for kernel ridge regression. That is optimal, so. In this case, if the problem is simple, we need a number of centers that is even smaller than square root of n. And this is a uh, good news. So those are our technical contributions. Now, I give an interesting insight with respect to the role of lambda and m. 
This insight is obtained by rewriting our result. The idea is simply to swap the role of lambda and m. So here I just express the theorem by putting m star as a fundamental quantity. What you can immediately see is that now the number of centers controls the, level, the regularization level of our learning algorithm. So lambda and m play the same role. They are both regularizers. This um, leads to a new interpretation for the subsampling level. Indeed, the number of centers is a, regular, um, a regularizer, and subsampling is a regularization, a, um, a regularization method. Okay, so from this interpretation, uh, we developed a, a natural incremental algorithm uh, for exploring the regularization level of our learning problem. Indeed, we pick a center and we compute the solution by using only that center. Then we pick another center and we just perform an update of the previous solution. We continue this way, incrementally updating the solution by adding new, new centers until we reach the best number of centers. So you, we don't have to recompute the solution by zero each time, we just update it. As you can see, if you cross-validate incrementally on the number of centers, you obtain two good results. First of all, you are controlling the regularization level of your algorithm by a computational quantity, it is the number of centers. Moreover, the time, the time space requirement now is tailored to the generalization capabilities of your data set. Indeed, you continue this process until you arrive to M star. Then you stop. This means that you are, um, you are not wasting any other computation that is not needed for statistical purposes. Okay. Uh, here, we just compared our algorithm, incremental algorithm with the state-of-the-art subsampling methods, data-dependent and non-data-dependent, in particular, random features and fast-food random features. As you can see for the, uh, from the table, we achieve uh, results that are comparable or better with the state-of-the-art. So, in conclusion, our main result is an optimal learning bound for data-dependent subsampling. Actually, our result holds beyond uniform subsampling. Um, so you are welcome to the poster to, uh, for more details about non-uniform subsampling. Moreover, some new questions and new perspective um, uh, arise from our analysis. Let me focus on the perspectives. First of all, we have seen that subsampling is a form of regularization. And it is very interesting. Moreover, we have seen that we can control uh, the, st the statistical properties and the generalization of our algorithm by using the computational resources. And it, this can be a good hint in the developing um, uh, new machine learning algorithms. So as I said, um, you are welcome to the poster for more details. Thank you very much. Okay, so before we are, t we are going to take uh, questions, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The speakers of the uh, spotlight session, please come to here, the move on the front, and make a line. Okay, so now we want to, we'd like to, we, we want to uh, take our questions and comments from the floor. Uh, hi. Hello. Uh, so uh, you described your work as a, a work about uh, kernel ridge regression mm -hmm. and not about Gaussian processes, and I guess that's no accident mm -hmm. because if you were talking about Gaussian processes, you would have to say something about the uh, posterior covariance as well. 
So I wonder if you have anything to say about that. Uh, actually, our, our result is the, for the statistical machine learning setting. So we assume that our data are sampled from distribution. And uh, so our result is not for the, um, uh, for the statistic, for the Gaussian process setting. Uh, we, we didn't study that, uh, in that direction. Are there questions? Um, I have one question. So um, uh, there is a, another paper which is very related mm -hmm. to your work uh, in the SNPs. So that is also about the generalization error bound of a kind of rigid regression with uh, nitrogen approximation. So, so, so if you have checked that paper, could you let me know yes. the difference and the yes. relation? This is a very interesting paper. And uh, it works uh, in a restricted setting with respect to ours. Indeed, they work uh, with um, when the, the input are fixed, while in our case, the input is random. So in our case, we can properly speak about the generalization properties of the learning algorithm. Other questions? So is the reason that you said subsampling regularizes because you're also simultaneously decreasing the number of parameters? Because it seems like uh, you should be able to improve your generalization by using more of your data uh, if you use it correctly. So um, what we do is that we minimize the um, mean square error on the whole data set. But now we are restricting the space of our estimators. So obviously, if we use very simple estimators, we are regularizing. So this is the idea behind. But the um, mean square error is minimized over the, the whole data set. Other questions? Uh, I have one more question. So, uh, could you extend your um, your, your theories to, to a situation in which the F star, the true function, is not included in the RKHS? Exactly, good question. So, uh, okay, this is rather technical, and uh, we decided to study the case where F is in H because the proofs are less technical. So, we, we thought that it could be a good um, starting point for the analysis. Okay. But, um, I see. We actually have, the, have the, the proof even in the other case, but they are a bit more complicated. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions? If no, so yeah, uh, please thank the speaker again. Thank you. Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available.